Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us for today's preview Oxy session on experiential learning um, and student research and internships in the field. Uh, we have a really exciting hour uh, planned for you all with, with some great Oxy seniors who are going to be lifting up some of the awesome work they've done over the last uh, few years um, here on campus and across the country and, and even across the, the world. Um, so we'll just give it a few more seconds for people to come in and join us. Um, but before we do, I just wanted to say that I uh, appreciate you all taking the time to come and be with us and learn a bit more about Oxy. Um, for those of you that are seniors uh, working on your applications, uh, we hope the process is going well. This is certainly not how uh, we imagined your senior year going. I'm sure that it is not how you <laughs> imagined your senior year either. Um, and so know that we really are rooting for you um, in, in just every way to kind of succeed, to be well, to, to take care of yourselves and hopefully still manage to find some joy and value uh, in the application process. Um, there is a lot going on in the world right now. Um, and we are glad that you have kind of found the bandwidth within yourself to tune in to learn a little bit more about, about Oxy. Um, so I am going to really get started. Um, you know, uh, we've got a lot of, of content to cover, so um, I won't. Uh, Filibust any any longer. Uh, my name is Julius. I'm an admission counselor here at Oxy. Um, I am also an Oxy alum. I graduated in 2016, um, but I am joined by three current Oxy students who um, are in their senior year and and really have have just done the most with their time on campus. Um, Kaya, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself really quickly? Yeah. Hi everybody. Thanks so much for coming. My name is Kaya. I'm a senior here at Oxy. Um, I'm from Washington State. I'm a student athlete on the women's track and field team. I'm a campaign, sem campaign semester alumni, um, and I've also just done various other activities and held jobs on campus. Absolutely. And Matthew? Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Um, super stoked to kind of get started and answer your questions. Um, I'm from Washington, D.C. I'm a double major in diplomacy and world affairs in Spanish, and then I'm minoring in Black Studies. Um, I'm also a student athlete on campus. I'm a study abroad alum. Two months was brief, but I'm an alum. Uh, I was in Madrid, Spain, and I have also held a few positions on campus. And uh, yeah, super excited. Absolutely. And Ashley, do you want to go next? Hi, my name is Ashley. I'm from New York City. Uh, I'm a Diplomacy and World Affairs major and a Latino Latin American Studies minor. I'm part of the Latinx Student Union, Student Labor Alliance, and I also hold multiple jobs uh, on campus. I also study abroad, went to Amsterdam, and now I'm participating in the Oxy at the UN program. Yeah, absolutely. And so we are going to spend the next you know, 45 minutes or so really kind of exploring these programs, what they looked like, um, kind of a day in the life and how they contributed to, um, to all of your Oxy experiences. I did want to add, though, that um, we have a couple of admission counselors who are going to be in the chat box providing links so you can continue your research on Oxy's off-campus programs um, on your own time. Also, if you do have questions for our panelists, you are welcome to use the Q&A feature um, at the bottom of your screen to ask questions, and we will spend the last 15 minutes or so uh, talking through that. Um, Matthew, do would you mind kind of talking a little bit about kind of how you ended up applying to Oxy. I know now as a senior, kind of, it seems probably um, pretty far removed, but how did Oxy even, even fall on your radar? What kind of drew you to, to the campus? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's so many things and obviously being on, in person, it just, it, you feel the community. Um, but I had a really great college counselor when I was a senior in high school. Um, and he kind of helped direct me to the West coast a little bit. Cause usually the East Coast, smaller school vibe, NESCAC kind of thing um, uh, is more harped upon, especially coming from the East Coast, from B from DC. That was a super easy pipeline, but getting exposed to Oxy, um, when I got to come out to do uh, to do a visit, both a little bit with the soccer team and meet the coaches, um, but also just take a tour of the school, walk around. Um, and then my senior year, once I was actually accepted, I got to go do the accepted students program. And that was super, super meaningful. Um, got to sit in on a class, which I'm pretty sure that option is, I want, I don't know if it's available necessarily now, but I think the zoom functionality you get to experience, I, I honestly might say more now that we can do all the stuff online. Cause there's just so much to interact with. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, great college counseling um, and uh, it ticked all my boxes, small school, liberal arts. I didn't really know what I wanted to do coming into college. Um, so 
getting to explore kind of myself and my um, academic and educational journey. Yeah, awesome. Um, Kaya, you were coming from um, equally as far away, though, though on the West Coast, um, from Washington. Um, so how did Oxy kind of fit into your uh, college search process? So Oxy kind of fell in my lap, um, which is a funny story, but I got a recruitment letter from my current coaches of the track and field team, and I actually threw it out. I said, no way, Los Angeles, I'm not going to go to school there. Um, and then after I continued my college search uh, the fall of my senior year, it was kind of similar to Matthew. It checked all my boxes. And then I went and visited in the spring and it took me just like that. I thought the campus was beautiful and I knew that it was the place I wanted to be. Awesome. And, and I realized that we've got two varsity athletes with us. Um, you know, the reality is uh, you know, only about a quarter of, of Oxy students are varsity athletes. So while it's certainly a significant population of, uh, of the campus community, um, not every student is going to necessarily um, be a varsity athlete. I wouldn't want you to, to get that impression, um, though, though it's certainly a, a meaningful community that we'll talk a little bit more about uh, during our time together. Ashley, uh, Ashley you, you are not a varsity athlete, I believe. So, so how, did, how, did you, um, how did Oxy kind of fall on your radar then, um, you know, sp sports aside? Yes, so not a varsity athlete, no. Um, so like I said, I'm from New York City, and though there were many options, you know, on the East Coast, I knew that I wanted to get very far away from home. I always say college is a really wonderful opportunity to just like go anywhere, explore it with, you know, some level of freedom. Um, so I wanted to go to LA, really good weather, um, and it's in a city, so you have all those sort of internship opportunities and just things to do, like I need to be in a city. I'm from a city, so I need to have activities. Uh, and then I looked into, you know, academics and study abroad because um, I knew I wanted to go abroad. I had studied abroad in, in high school, and that's definitely something I wanted to repeat. Uh, and then the UN program came up, and I just thought that that was a really unique opportunity because I believe it's the only uh, undergraduate program in the country of its kind. And so that really drew me to Oxy. I had my eyes set on that. Um, and then I visited through the multicultural visiting program. So I got flown out for like two days, three days. Um, and I got to stay with a student in Poly Hall, which I ended up living in. And it was just a really, really great experience. Like, I feel like you need to have a really good vibe and sort of comfort with the community you're going to be part of for the next four years. And, and I definitely felt welcome um, and comfortable in like a place I could be at for, for the future. So that's why I decided to come. <laughs> Absolutely, and I'm glad you read out the uh, UN program. Um, would you mind just kind of uh, walking us through briefly what, what exactly the UN program is, explaining it uh, in your own words? Sure, so uh, in your senior year in the fall, 18 students from any major get to apply to go to the UN. And normally you would be going to New York because that's where headquarters are at. Um, and you'd be living there with your cohort and interning at either an agency or a permanent mission. So I did, I'm interning at the per permanent mission of Costa Rica to the UN. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a whole written interview, I mean, written application and then an interview. Uh, and then, yeah, then you go. I can always talk about that more, but. Yeah, absolutely. No, no, I think that's um, helpful. And so you're interning full time, um, you know, theoretically in New York, but but for the United Nations. Um, but there's also an academic component to it um, as well, correct? Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> yes, very much so. Um, you so yeah, you have your full time internship, which is you know about forty hours. So some people do more. It kind of depends um, on on your week. But yeah, there's that, and then you also have classes. So there's two and a half classes right now, one being conflict prevention, one being um, special topics, which is just a range of things. And then the, the half one being sort of checking in uh, about the internship in general. So, yeah. Wow. Very cool, very cool. Um, I, I think the UN is, is absolutely one of the coolest programs. And like you said, Ashley, we are the only uh, college to have a residential um, internship with the UN in New York. Um, but uh, Kaya, you participated in campaign semester and um, and in some ways it's similar in that it's, you know, abroad, but domestic, um, you know, how did you, I guess, know about campaign semester when you were looking at, at schools and, and what exactly is campaign semester? So I did not know about campaign semester before I attended Oxy. Um, so I, I found out my freshman year and then decided to do it in the fall of my sophomore year. But campaign semester is this awesome opportunity for Oxy students to go work on a campaign and then receive uh, 16 units of credit, so a full semester's worth of credit. And then after election day, all the campaign semester participants fly back to LA and um, we have this three week long intensive course and we write a very long research paper 
that kind of synthesizes our thoughts, answers a research question. And so it's similar to the UN where it's a really unique program that also has an academic component, but you get real life experience for a semester worth of credit. Yeah, awesome. Um, I'm, and, and, and certainly a timely program, um, just, just to, for, for those of you that are um, following the election um, at home, um, I'm sure it's hard, hard not to. Um, now, Matthew, you did kind of a more of a traditional, um, what we would consider kind of a traditional study abroad program, um, which took you to Spain, I believe. Um, but um, how did study abroad? Yeah, um, was that something you meant to do? Um, you know, did you always know you wanted to go to Spain? How did you end up kind of selecting the program you did? Yeah, so I, um, it's interesting. So I, I, when I talk about Oxy and my academic experience and just higher education in general, it, a lot of it kind of lends itself to um, Kai's explanation. Like a lot of it just kind of fell in my lap. Like I, I'm a double major and a minor, kind of fell into my lap. It was an accident. Just uh, random events along the way led me to where I am now. Um, I would say the study abroad in Spain thing though was entirely intentional. Um, even if I weren't a Spanish major, even if I were just a minor or not at all, I would have gone abroad regardless. Um, because something that Ashley touched on earlier, I, being from the East Coast, I wanted to go far away for school. I wanted it to be a learning, growing experience um, where I was a little bit further removed. I was more independent, that kind of thing. And study abroad seemed like the natural next step for that and specifically for me and where my comfort level was at. And uh, getting to speak Spanish on a daily basis with my host family in class, with everyone just out in the world was the greatest gift. Um, and then the added bonus of having the freedom to go travel on the weekends and go to all these different countries and see these incredible things. Um, so uh, that experience was incredibly valuable. Um, but in terms of what the actual kind of program was like, um, it was uh, classes Monday through Thursday, and then uh, Fridays we were off the weekend as well, uh, which was built in by the program because they understand that students want to travel. So you get the um, you get the intensive school experience with uh, co college level professors from um, universities in your home city, um, and then on Fridays and the weekends you're free to kind of go explore, um, and that was an incredibly valuable experience for me. Yeah, um, and just just kind of while we're, while we're talking about it, I mean, what were some of the classes you were taking? Um, was it was it all kind of Spanish language classes, or obviously they were all in Spanish? But what was the nature of kind of the classes you were taking? Yeah, so I um I also lucked out a little bit because I I needed to get some requirements done for my majors. Uh, so I was able to fit in uh, two requirements for my Spanish major. I was taking a, um, a literature course on uh, Spanish cultural myths, which was fascinating. My professor, I'm a huge fan of him. Um, and then I was also taking a course uh, in the Prado Museum twice a week. Um, so our program center, like the physical location was three miles away from the Prado. And every Tuesday and Thursday, I would walk from the program center the three miles to the museum and then I'd have class in the museum. So we'd walk around, discuss art and then kind of write papers and take tests on it. And it was, it was amazing. Um, and so those were kind of the two for my Spanish major. And then for DWA, I was taking two courses, one of them uh, dealing with uh, international economy. And then the other one was dealing with uh, geopolitics. Mm -hmm. And those were uh, professors were fantastic and um, dealing with some incredibly topical and uh, fascinating things because the world, especially um, right now, there's a lot to discuss. So. <laughs> um doing those two things and then every every student um i don't necessarily know if it's it was a spain specific thing but at least for my program every student was enrolled in um, a spanish language specific course so uh dealing with grammar um and uh, your oral skills mm -hmm. and then writing papers and that kind of thing um but uh, there was a at the beginning of the program there was a placement, so it was a oral, like a really short five to 10 minute oral conversation with somebody, and then a short written test that you kind of took and then they assessed you and then placed you in your groups. Um, and those went, for the most part, really, really well for people. And I think everyone's level was assessed well, and so you got the most out of your program. 
Awesome, awesome. Um, Ashley, um, having studied abroad in Amsterdam, would you say that that was kind of a similar experience to what Matthew was describing or how was your program? Um, was it different um, and, and if so kind of in, in what ways? Yeah, so I uh, went through with CIEE, so mine was a hybrid program. So uh, I took one class through CIEE being um, Dutch, so I got to continue learning Dutch uh, and the other classes I took at the University of Amsterdam. So it's very much, you know, um, living my life as a, as a, well, international student in Amsterdam. Uh, but yeah, very similar, going to classes, doing my work yeah. um, and also having a good time, but also having time to travel. Uh, in the weekend just because it, everything is so close in Europe. <laughs> totally. Um, no, I mean, I think what's, what's so valuable about those kind of international experiences, um, you know, and I say this kind of with an outsider's lens because I did not um, study abroad during my time at Oxy, um, but, but is that you're not just with a cohort of Oxy students typically. You're with students from all over the country and sometimes even all over the world. Um, so as much as you're kind of exploring a new country, you're also meeting people from from a range of backgrounds, um, really, really getting um, to experience you know, the world from a, from a global perspective, um, which is different than the United Nations program where you where you are with a cohort of Oxy students. Um, although your internship site, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ashley, is typically just you. You're not necessarily going to be at a, at a site um, with another Oxy student. You know, you're kind of held to this expectation that you're a pre-professional. Um, so while, while we're talking, I mean, just, you know, what does a typical day in the life look like for you at the UN? Um, you know, and, and obviously it is virtual, but if you wouldn't mind kind of giving us a sense of, of how, how that compares to yeah, um, your life as a student, you know, way back when you were just another student. Yeah. So totally different than a typical day as like an Oxy student. Uh, right now, because things are virtual, it, it is a little chaotic sometimes um, dealing with time difference. So where I'm, I'm living in Mexico right now and where I'm living, it's only an hour behind New York time. So it's not as bad for me, but the way that the UN is set up, I'm sorry about the noise, I'm in Mexico. So the way it's set up um, is that meetings go from 10 to 6. Apologies. And they no, go no. from 10 to 6. So, my meetings will usually start at 10, but sometimes if there are meetings that are scheduled through, let's say, um, like somewhere in Europe, like some mission in Europe, um, then they're much earlier. So I've had to wake up at like six in the morning to <laughs> attend a meeting. But that's generally what I do is I'll attend meetings, um, take notes, look for things, and just represent uh, the mission of Costa Rica. Or I do research for, you know, like speeches or, or for negotiations in any, um, resolutions that are being drafted. So those are my main, uh, the main things that I'm doing, but then also just watching general debates and, and general, I don't know, uh, meetings that I don't necessarily have to attend just because it's informative uh, and it's a unique opportunity. Absolutely. I mean, I guess this may, maybe this is a silly question, but I mean, I know we're all kind of so used to like Zoom University as it were. Um, are all these UN meetings? I mean, I guess I've never really thought about it, but, but is the UN pretty much just operating over Zoom or like Google Meets or if you're allowed to tell us, like what, what is a typical UN meeting or resolution hearing kind of look like? Yeah, so you have public meetings, which are on UN Web TV, so that's accessible to anybody, mm -hmm. or you have private meetings, and they're all through, or most of them are through webcast, which is the UN platform. Um, and for those, you just need a password, uh, whether you're an agency or a, or a mission to get in. And it's just really interesting also seeing all these delegations, um, the representatives sort of deal with, with technology. That's kind of fun. And there's constant repetition of like, please put yourself on mute. Um, so yeah, it's sort of everybody's dealing with the same sort of tech issues and, and you know, internet connection, things like that. Um, that's hilarious. No, I, I'm glad to know that, uh, that we're all in the same boat. Um, all right, Kaya, campaign semester. Um, you did it your sophomore year, which, which is pretty early um, to kind of leave Oxy. You know, you, you just got here practically and then you went off and um, I believe you were in Minnesota, correct? Um, you were working on Tina Fey's Senate race. Um, how, how, how did you go kind of decide to do it um, and so early on? Um, did you have concerns and like, were they assuaged during your time there? Yeah, so I noticed one of the questions in the chat was um, if you can choose your own campaign and the answer is yes, as long as it is not in your home state. So I was really interested in working on a bigger campaign. I wanted to work on a US Senate campaign. So I chose Tina Smith in Minnesota um, and so I wanted to work on a Senate campaign and I wanted to work on a woman's campaign and that narrowed down my options very, very quickly. So Tina Smith was the person that I chose. Yeah, no. Um, and, and so you, um, 
you showed up in Minnesota on the first day, um, you know, to usually the end of August, kind of when the fall semester would start. And, um, and, and then what happened? Um, where, did, where did they put, did you, did you know what to do? Did they tell you what to do? Where did you end up kind of working and in what part of the campaign? Campaign semester was such a wild ride because of that, because it's so unstructured, unstructured and you're just supposed to really dive in, which is basically what happened. And um, I kind of ended up getting funneled into the media team. So I worked a lot with the two women who worked for the media team. And I also represented Tina Smith at a lot of finance events and just answered questions for people and talked to donors. And then when you're nearing the election, um, all we did was knock on doors and do phone banking and that kind of thing, which I have to admit was not my favorite part, but I certainly learned a lot. I learned how to talk to strangers about politics, which not a lot of strangers love to do. Um, so I, I have to say that I learned so much and even though it was quite chaotic, I am really glad that I did it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and, and again, this, this session isn't about me. It's about all. Of, it's about all of you. Um, but but as a campaign semester alumni from uh, 2014, I think you're so right that that campaigns really are just just unstructured in nature. There's no way to kind of have uh, you know a a normal title or assignment. You know, because it becomes just an all hands on deck endeavor. Um, so so much much to unpack there, um, and, and I'm sure we will. Um, but Matthew, I'd love to kind of pull you back into the conversation. Um, and I'm just kind of curious, you know, um, having done the program in Spain, you were there for you know, two months, obviously the pandemic kind of threw a wrench into that. Um, what challenges, as you were kind of, obviously studying abroad was a priority for you, but you're pretty involved at Oxy, um, right? I'm here, mean, you're an athlete, you're involved in a lot of different parts of student life. Did you have hesitations about kind of being an athlete and studying abroad or um, balancing it with kind of your other campus? Uh, roles and responsibilities? That's a really great question. Um, I would say 100% yes. Mm. And I think, so So I'm going to kind of turn the comment that you made to Kaya around, which was she did campaign semester really early on, like she'd just gotten there, like that kind of thing. Once you've been at Oxy for a while, you're really tied to the place. Eagle Rock is awesome. California is great. Like Los Angeles is beautiful. Like why would I want to leave? Do you know what I mean? But it, there is a bigger world out there and being involved on campus, it has its merits, but to some degree college is a stepping stone, right? You, like, you want to use the lessons you've learned and kind of the experience you've gained from your three to four years at Oxy to go be somebody and do something great in the world. And there's no better place to start than when you're already in college. Like, you know what I mean? So I think there were definitely reservations um, and the athlete perspective is quite nuanced and very specific. So I don't, I'm not necessarily gonna go into that side of it, but from just a normal student perspective, you're leaving your, your friends behind. You're going to an entirely new place, most likely, that you've never been before um, to study new things you've never learned uh, with people you've never met. And that can be stressful, uh, whether you're an athlete or not. It, it It's really relevant. And I think there were definitely scary moments. And I, I myself, I'm somewhat of, of a procrastinator. So I did almost every single study abroad application like deadline at the last moment. Um, and I, I thank God every day for IPO, uh, our international programs office for sticking with me uh, and making sure that actually became a reality and that happened. Um, but yeah, I mean, there were certainly reservations and there were um, question marks along the way and there was stress, but uh, the two months was entirely worth um, the effort and I want to go back. So I hope, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, no, no, it definitely did. I mean, Ashley, you're, you're in the UN program now and obviously this is a different semester, um, you know, because we all are virtual, but, but how have you kind of been staying connected to the Oxy community while, while you do this program? Um, you know, how have you and, and the other UN students kind of built your own kind of like Oxy, Oxy community within a community, if you will? Um, well, what has that looked like for you being in the field as it were? Yeah, so uh, it's different than what it would have been. Uh, we would have all been living together in, in New York City and that in itself being in the same building, um, so I've heard, uh, builds a lot of, you know, community. Um, but obviously we're all virtual, we're all like across the country or in different countries. Um, we've been connected either just 
during classes because we meet weekly or in like the WhatsApp group chat that we have or just, you know, messaging individually, trying to support each other. Um, everything is virtual. So, I mean, that's how it's been. There's a lot of like gifts that are sent in the in the WhatsApp group chat. So that's fun. Or, you know, people always updating on, on any funny or weird things that happen in whatever meeting they are attending. Um, so that's with the, the UN cohort. And then in terms of, you know, Oxy and all those friends back home, I mean, back at Oxy, it was, it's been difficult just because, um, yeah, I studied abroad fall of my junior year and then came back for a month and a half, two months. And then the pandemic hit, went back to New York, you know, quarantined, was isolated. And then now I'm doing the UN still like far away from my friends. So it's been difficult, but you know, Zoom when you can, but everybody's also busy. Um, the majority of my friends are seniors. So we're all working on our senior uh, comps, which is, a good time uh, or just have jobs and you know class and everything and it's all over the place so it, it's kind of difficult you just got to make time though yeah absolutely well so i'm curious then um and then again kind of in, in contrast to kaya who did campaign semester early on in her oxy experience you're doing the un program after being a D diplomacy and world affairs major for the last you know kind of three years so so how is the hands-on experience working at the UN kind of compared to, to what you expected and, and what your coursework over the last couple of years has prepared you for? Um, obviously, Diplomacy and World Affairs isn't, isn't designed necessarily to prepare you just for the UN, um, but, but re reflecting on it, what, what were you ready for? What, did you, what were you ready to expect? And what kind of is surprising you working in international gov government organizations? Yeah, I think that because I'm a diplomacy and world affairs major, I was really well prepared for the UN program just because all of the topics that I've been um, learning about or, I don't know, writing reports on are things that I've learned about in my classes, whether it was, you know, in like any of the intro classes in my first or in my sophomore year or just the more specific electives that I, that I took. So it's been fairly easy keeping up with the sort of topics that are, that are going on. I'm working in the sixth committee for the permanent mission of Costa Rica. So that's the legal committee. Mm. Um, and so it's just interesting now learning, sorry, again, learning about um, how like, different countries are talking to each other, delegations. You hear patterns when you sit in on these meetings over and over, um, like the US constantly has this standpoint or China this one, Russia this one you know, whatever, Venezuela, this one. Um, so that's interesting because that's just some tea and it's pretty entertaining um, aside from just like the the hard like textbook kind of things that, I've, uh, that I'm familiar with. Definitely. Did you do any sort of um, like model UN or pre-government work um, in high school at all? Um, I'm just curious. Um, no, I've done campaign work in like college, but not any. Right. Model UN or anything like that. No. Okay. No, only because I know sometimes students ask, you know, well, uh, you know, does Oxy have a model UN? And I say, you know, well, no, we've got something better, you know, the, the actual UN. Um, what are you thinking? There is a model UN class Ooh. Um, in DWA. I don't know if it's yearly or every two years, but I think there is one. There was one last year. Anyways, there is one. There mm. is a class. There used to be a club, but then that one ended. But there is. Gotcha, gotcha. Did you, but you haven't taken that class. No. I mean, you don't need to. Obviously, you're, you're getting the real deal. Um, well, very cool. Um, uh, that is fascinating about about kind of the the tea and the reputations. I'm sure different different countries get. Um, you know, um, and and I'm sure if you were in person, kind of the water cooler conversations that that happen as well. Um, to to look at campaign semester though, Kai, I, I am curious because I know for me at least when I did the program, I kind of had this very, you know. Um, sexy house of cards idea of what politics would look like and especially electoral politics. Um, and, and in many ways it did, um, but for me, I kind of was like, oh, maybe this isn't exactly the work I wanna do. Um, I came back to Oxy and kind of really refocused on, on American studies. I was in Louisiana um, for campaign semester. So I w ended up being, being much more fascinated with kind of the, the American South and politics in the South um, culturally. Um, after you did campaign semester, did you come back to Oxy really rejuvenated to work on campaigns that this is the work you want to do or how did it kind of inform or reshape um, your, your academic interests or passions um, in any way? Um, that's actually really interesting that you say that because I felt very similarly. Um, I forgot to mention in my intro that I'm an economics and politics double major. Um, and so doing campaign semester as a sophomore 
really helped me academically, but I think it also started to shape what I want to do after college. And it was kind of a kickstart to thinking about my career because I was working as a professional yet a college student on this internship. Um, and I felt the same way. I didn't, I don't think that I would want to work on a campaign like that again, but I think that I still gained valuable lessons from it. Yeah. Um, although, although, um, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but, but you did some sort of campaign work this past summer, right? Um, as an internship. Um, I guess, how was that race um, different? Um, or now that you kind of knew what to expect, how was it to go into a new campaign? Um, already with kind of some background context. Yeah, so I worked on a really, really small scale campaign this um, last summer. Sorry about the noise, oh. my window's open. But um, one of my mother's friends was running for a uh, county commissioner in my county in Washington state. And she said, look, I really need help. Please help me out. I will hire you. And I said, okay. And I started as her campaign manager at the start of the summer. And I, I did enjoy that because I got to learn a lot more about my county and the politics in that county of my hometown, but I also got to choose, pick and choose what I liked from the work that I did it on the campaign. And so instead of phone banking, I did a bunch of research and I interviewed uh, different people in different positions in the county. And so I kind of got to create my own internship, so to speak, rather than following in someone else's lead. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and, and I'm just going to pick, pick on you for a bit because I, th I think this is interesting. So, so you do campaign semester, you're like, okay, parts of this are good, parts of this maybe not exactly what I want to do. Um, and so you add economics, um, you're now a double major. Well, what is it, you know, as a senior that you kind of imagine yourself wanting to do more of after you graduate? Um, what, what comes next for, for Kaya? So it doesn't have, it does have to do with politics, but not specifically campaigns. Sure. I'm really interested in environmental work and making companies more sustainable, um, perhaps environmental consulting, um, but those kind of mesh economics and politics. And as I have understand, as I have studied them at the same time, they're really not separate from each other. Um, and so I think that politics and the environment are very relevant right now. And they're also very Combined, and that's what I'm most passionate about. That's awesome. Um, do you think that that is going to be, um, and then this might be a good point to kind of start talking about um, our senior thesis projects, right? You know, many students will kind of use their time abroad, their internships um, re as a jumping off point for their senior thesis projects, which all students will do some variation of. Uh, I know that for politics majors, that's not something you typically start until the spring, but, but have you kind of thought about ways you may want that to, to look? Yeah, I've definitely taken, so I, I wasn't expecting to spend the summer in my hometown, but mm. coronavirus kind of made that happen, which is fine. Um, and so I've kind of been looking at issues throughout the summer in my hometown, and this is specific, and I'm not sure if you want this answer, but just, uh, I live right by the Columbia River and looking at the salmon population and its pollution and how that has affected the salmon run over the years and the politics behind it, because it's uh, in fact very political. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. I think that sounds awesome. Um, wow, <laughs> I, I had no idea, um, but I'm, I'm excited to, to read it, hopefully, um, or, or at least hear you present. I hope they get to do some sort of Zoom presentations for senior comps, though I know politics doesn't always always present. Uh, Matthew, how about you? Um, you came back to, well, I guess you came back to Oxy virtually now, but um, having done your, your semester in Spain, um, you were obviously uh, a Spanish double major going into the program, but has it kind of informed um, or changed or reaffirmed your commitment to the Spanish language or the work you want to see yourself doing um, after you leave Oxy? Yeah, so I I think that I'm uh, kind of in the, the vein of um, things falling into my lap somewhat by accident. Uh, study abroad changed my future trajectory um, quite immediately, actually, in terms of I got kind of cut off only two months, um, but I loved it so much that I want to go back and one opportunity that um, was available to basically everybody under the sun, but Oxenville does a very good job of um, facilitating our Fulbright, Fulbright grants. So um, after returning home this summer, I was like, wow, kind of want to go back as soon as possible. Um, let's make this happen. So I um, worked with Occidental advisors basically all summer and then into this fall and have since turned in um, a proposal nine days ago, nine days ago, um, 
thank you, thank you, uh, to go back to Madrid and study an extension of my senior comps topic for DWA, um, which is dealing with issues of nationalism and sport in Spain. And uh, I'm super excited, who knows if I'll get it, um, but uh, study abroad did wonders for basically where I wanna go in the future, but then also making me feel incredibly comfortable about the academic choices that I made for college. Um, Spanish was uh, coming into school as a freshman, not necessarily a priority for me. Um, I had differing experiences when I was in high school, some good, some bad. And I was like, well, I might as well just skip out and be done because I, I had the ability to check out. Um, I had an extra slot in my schedule. I decided, you know what, we're gonna keep doing it. And I had a great experience at Oxy. One thing led to another, I became a Spanish minor application process for study abroad happened in in applying I became a major and I'm finishing Spanish comps right now so it's it, it, things just kind of happen and I, it's really a testament to um, both the liberal arts kind of system but then also uh, I saw this mentioned in the chat the the approachability of professors I would not be a Spanish major if not for the professor I initially asked for a recommendation um, to go abroad because for some abroad programs, um, you need recommendations and particularly for Spanish and the program that I was applying to, um, there had to be uh, an acknowledgement that I actually knew how to speak Spanish. So I asked uh, one of my very good professor friends to, to write me a rec and he, uh, he told me no. And I was like, Professor Ellis, what the heck is going on? Like, you're the nicest person I know. He said, well, I will write it for you if you look at the requirements to be a major. And I said, okay, that's quite odd, but sure. Uh, so that night I went back to my room, read the requirements and realized he was doing me the favor of uh, opening my eyes because I would get requirements while abroad because my classes were in Spanish. And then I'd come back, uh, follow my senior year and have to take the Spanish comps course and then one class in English, which turned out to be linguistics, which I'm in right now. And then I would be a major. And that's all the extra work I'd have to do. And it wouldn't even be necessarily that difficult. It wouldn't be a stretch of my schedule. I wouldn't have to move things around. It was just somebody looking out for me in the literal nicest way um, to help me get the most out of my college education, which I can't really ask anything more of, you know? Yeah, no, I, I think that's a great story. I hadn't heard that before. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I took uh, Spanish through the 200 level with Professor Ello. So I, I agree. I mean, awesome, awesome people, but but that is compelling um, um, in many ways. Um, and we are certainly excited to hear about how, how things go with the Fulbright. Um, Ashley, same question, but, but, but in particular kind of well, in, in particular, nothing. Um, you know, certainly what, what are you thinking senior comps, um, you know, wise, uh, do you think it'll feature the UN in some way? Um, do you think that the UN is the kind of place you would want to see yourself working in the future? Or how are you kind of processing this experience you're having and what um, what what may come next? Yeah, so for my senior comps, uh, I'm focusing on Venezuelan refugees. Um, it's just something I've been looking at throughout my time at, time at Oxy and even, even before Oxy. Um, I've been very interested in, in like that country. So my comps are gonna be on um, the refugee crisis. And I may possibly include um, interviews from experts uh, from the UN, but I'm not that sure yet. And also because you're so busy with work and I have a million other things aside from my internship, the focus this semester isn't necessarily on the comps. That is very much a spring issue, um, aside from you know the proposal that was just submitted. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very happy with there's like 20 pages I don't know what I was doing but it was it <laughs> it's a little long um but again very interested and then in terms of the future um the UN so I, I've had my eyes on possibly you know working in the UN at some point in in the future but I'm not sure I know that I've wanted to work somehow um with human rights in Latin America from like a regional or international position but whether I want to do that right away, I'm not sure. I want to travel. That's one of like my passions. So with COVID, not sure how to work that in or when. Um, but 
uh, I, I will say that this experience is definitely like eye opening in terms of getting like the actual what might my life look like someday, um, which is really, really beneficial. Yeah. Great. No, um, I think, uh, you know, certainly we don't expect you to, 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 to have the answers right now, um, but, but it is exciting to think about definitely. You know, I mean, these are such great examples of, of the ways that I think Oxy really kind of engages uh, the country, engages the world. But, but I also want to reiterate, you know, for our audience that, that, that this isn't something that, you know, kind of only happens, you know, through these programs. Um, we, you know, very much kind of emphasize this type of learning, this type of, you know, uh, hands-on experience um, and research, you know, in Los Angeles, just as much as anywhere else in the country um, or the world. Uh, the majority of Oxy students are coming to LA for the first time. And in many ways, LA might kind of feel like a study abroad program um, for those, for those um, new to the, uh, to the city. Um, and so, you know, well, again, you know, I think there's so many cool things to talk about within the context of UN and campaign semester and international programs. Um, how do you kind of see yourself really doing field work in Los Angeles? I mean, let's, let's get local for a second, you know, and, and I don't know if there's any particular classes you've had that you think have really done a great job of lifting up that kind of work or either after um, having your international experiences or, or domestic, you know, off-campus program experiences that you kind of come back to Los Angeles with a new, a new lens, um, you know, or I'll, I'll let you all interpret the question however, however kind of feels right for you. Um, uh, Matthew, do you want to kick us off this time? We'll kind of change up the order a little bit. Yeah, sure. I, I mean, I think the first thing that you are as a college student is a member of your your new community. Like, I think that's the most central aspect of being an Occidental student. And we are very much integrated into the Eagle Rock community. Um, one of the first things that I actually remember seeing when I got to campus was I flew in a little bit early, was doing preseason for soccer. And uh, I drove in with my parents and I saw a huge banner like, like across the street. I was like, that's weird. And it said like, greetings, Oxy students. Like, we're, we're stoked to have you, like all that kind of stuff. And I was like, wow, like, I don't think we're that close to campus. And in truth, it was probably, I don't know, 10 or 12 blocks away, but it was very much in like in the community. And I think um, Oxy is very integrated. And even now, over the course of my now almost four years, we're more integrated. I think we, we just, branched out and we now have a new art space just off campus um we all the time we have community members on campus whether it's um in our dance studio um just walking around on campus with their dogs honestly um but i think this semester in particular and last semester i guess particularly challenges have been mm -hmm. posed by the pandemic um and uh i'm a member of the student athlete um uh, advisory committee which uh, shortens to SAC and one of the things that we've kind of been working on um, and there are a number of students that I'm very close with that are involved in the program I'm not personally but um, teaching PE and physical education to uh, local kids over zoom and that's something that they'd be doing in person if not for the pandemic but uh, it's very valuable work and being looped into the community is, are, I, I think it's arguably the most important thing that you get um, when you get to be on campus. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and in the context of diplomacy and world affairs, I mean, I, I just want to spend a couple of minutes talking about, about the Young Initiative. And I'm not sure how much involvement either you or Ashley have had with, with the Young Initiative, but part of the benefit of being in Los Angeles, as I kind of see it, is not only that, you know, um, we have, you know, cool opportunities to go out into the city, but also that we have some really awesome you know, professionals who are coming through Los Angeles are doing work in LA. Um, so the Young Initiative, are either of you, do either of you um, do any work within that? Um, brings brings speakers, you know, to campus, um, you know, who are doing um, diplomacy, uh, diplomacy work, um, you know, either um, in a diplomatic sense or certainly in the context of the Olympics, um, which are scheduled to be in LA in 2028, um, you know, and really facilitating conversations um, in the context of LA, but but through a global lens. Um, so so that work is certainly not something that we just leave, you know, uh, for broad programs, but really integrate in, into campus. Um, uh, but Kaya, um, how about you? Have you had any kind of classes, politics or economics wise, that really kind of use LA as as a as as field work in so many words? So I mentioned a little bit earlier my um, interest in the environment. So I've taken a couple geology classes. 
And one of the geology classes that I got to take took an in-depth look at Los Angeles's water system. Mm -hmm. So we went on for this, I got to take this when we were in person. Um, and so we got to see how water is transported to LA and we went to restoration um, facilities and we got to travel all around LA seeing how we get our water and what we do with it and how we treat our water and where it goes in the ocean. And so I think that is my most like, directly in LA course. Yeah, no, um, I think I think that's very cool. And it's a good reminder too um, that, you know, field work, um, you know, studying abroad, kind of having those cultural experiences, even in Southern California, aren't just you know, for the social sciences, right? They're not just humanities based. That, that field work is something that absolutely um, happens in science and especially the earth sciences, um, you know, as well as the humanities that, that we really, um, you know, there's no exception to kind of the, the majors and programs that are engaging in Los Angeles, whether that's art history, you know, or psychology or, or geology, um, especially. Um, and I do want to um, kind of invite our attendees um, watching to, to ask any questions you have for our student participants, um, or our student panelists um, in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. We'll try and spend the last 10 minutes or so doing Q&A from the audience. So, so let them know your questions. Um, but Ashley, I guess, how have you kind of seen, you know, field work occur in Los Angeles, um, if at all? <laughs> So I think that there's so many ways to engage with the LA community, like so many so that I'm not even aware of all of them. Um, and you can do that. It doesn't necessarily have to be through classes. So, I mean, I did it um, through a class, through critical theory, social justice. Uh, one of their core classes, even though I'm not like not a major, I just wanted to take it, is, is meant to engage um, with the LA community, or it could be like, you know, outside of it as well, which is actually what I did. Um, but like, there's so many classes, um, but aside from that, which, sorry, I did that class and I, I had an internship through them. Um, but aside from that, like a lot of the clubs, or I don't know if I maybe mean, even all of them engage with the LA community. So um, I've done it with like Student Labor Alliance, which is, which engages with uh, Oxy staff itself. So very local, <laughs> or um, I've, I've worked for three years through the Neighborhood Partnership Program, which I hold very, near and dear to my heart. Um, so through mentoring or tutoring um, or like college advising, shadowing mm -hmm. all like a bunch of things. And I know that there's a million other things, um, but there's so many ways to engage. Like you do not need to study abroad or like a uh, campaign or go to the UN program or anything to engage and get actual like experience. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I think I think that's so true. You know, we really talk about from an admissions lens in so many ways, kind of the power of place, you know, why it matters to be in Los Angeles. Um, you know, that, uh, and I, uh, you know, try and say this to prospective students that, right, it's not a coincidence that students come here and were just so happen to be in LA, right? The students who are coming to Oxy are making an active choice um, to, to be in a place where they can engage Los Angeles, you know, over the, the course of four years. Um, well, well, all very exciting stuff. Um, you know, I think so, at least. Um, we do have a couple of questions. Um, one is from Dinah. Hi, Dinah. Um, is it hard to reintegrate into the Oxy community when you return from ab abroad? Um, uh, Kaya, what, what was that like for you? You were gone for the whole start of your sophomore semester. So you went from being a second semester first year to now a second semester sophomore. Um, what changed? What was the same? You know, what, what was that reintegration process, if you will, kind of like? I think because I did it as a sophomore and because I was domes domestic, it was so easy. I got placed into a random room and ended up loving my roommate and um, who lived around us as well and found some amazing new friends. And it was, so it, it's actually interesting because campaign semester, you come back in the middle of a semester, which sometimes might seem awkward, but it was actually incredibly satisfying for, for me to run into my friends again and to just be here when everyone is gearing up for finals week. And it was a breeze. It was not hard to reintegrate at all, but I'm not sure if that experience is different when you've been abroad. Yeah. Um, no, and actually, um, just because we do have the time, um, I think, I mean, that, that, that when you come back from campaign semester, right? I mean, it's such a draining experience. You're kind of surrounded by strangers for so long, um, you know, really out in the field. Um, it does feel so relieving to come back to Oxy, but um, I think that seminar um, is such a valuable time to really kind of unpack what just happened, you know? Um, and, and as I remember the program, and correct me if I'm wrong, you know, each week you kind of focus on a different theme, whether that's financing in the campaign, where did the money come from, or, or advertising in the campaign, you know, how did commercials and, and newspapers and media in, inform, you know, kind of the, the talking points of the election. But um, do you have any, uh, you know, big takeaways from that seminar, um, just hearing other students share their experiences or kind of reflecting on your campaign in a 
academic lens, um, things that, you know, I know it was now almost two years ago, but, but what, um, two years ago exactly, I guess, but what, uh, what do you remember from that seminar, um, if anything, or maybe you just kind of blocked the whole process out? It was, <laughs> no, no, I think it affected my academic career greatly. It, so the independent project and the inter independent research paper that we had to do was very extensive and doing it as a sophomore, I think I benefited maybe even more so because I hadn't really had to go that in depth with projects mm -hmm. yet as a first semester sophomore. Um, so I think that it taught me a lot academically. And though you're right, I don't remember exactly the contents of each course or each week, but I know that I spent so much time on that paper. I mean, three and a half weeks, I was only writing and that, that's what I was doing. And I think that it really taught me how to delve into something and how to look at something that is potentially non-academic and mm -hmm. put an academic lens on it. And I think that was something that was really important for me to learn as a sophomore. And then I applied it to many of my projects in my further years. Sure. Do you remember, just out of curiosity, kind of what your capstone um, uh, campaign semester paper was about, what, what you did choose to analyze um, from Tina Smith's race? Yeah, I chose to analyze Minnesota as a swing state and mm -hmm. kind of the dichotomy between Democrats and Republicans there, which is very different from other states. And I just analyzed Minnesota as a case study comparing other states and their voting habits. Yeah. Okay, very cool. Um, I, you might have to kind of take it back out and uh, edit it after after this election, depending on how things go. Um, Ashley, how about you? Because you, you were abroad on the fall of your junior year, correct? Um, and so you, you kind of got to come back to campus, um, you know, at least for the two months before uh, COVID hit. Um, so did you find it a pretty easy transition? Um, you know, was there kind of any reverse culture shock, as it were, on returning from Amsterdam? So uh, I stayed in Amsterdam or in the Netherlands in general until like three days before the start of the next semester. And then I flew straight to LA. Mm. So I didn't have that winter break to, you know, be sort of really sad about my abroad experience being over. I kind of was like thrown into, okay, it's Tuesday time to start your first class now. Um, so I don't know, integration wise, I think it was, I, I had gone to Amsterdam before, like I've experienced the culture before. Um, I go very frequently, so I knew I would be going back. So that part of me wasn't sad. I think that the part of me that was sad was, and that was like difficult to sort of get used to was the fact that now it was spring and the other half of all the students that are, that would be going abroad then went abroad. And so a lot of my friends went abroad. And though I got to see some faces that I was missing, also the other faces had left. And so that was, I think the difficult part. Um, and also just, getting used to not doing the things that I had been used to, like riding my bike every day. And <laughs> that's like life in Amsterdam, you ride your bike. But then I went to, I used like the bike share program, got a bike and I was like, yay, it's like a good time again. So I don't know, many things that remind me, reminded me of being abroad um, yeah. also helped me reintegrate. No, totally. Um, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and I was gonna say, uh, Caroline asked about getting in touch with you all if, if you have other questions. And, and all of you, um, these are some of our wonderful senior fellows in the office, so their contact information is available on our webpage. And I believe one of our admission counselors will be posting the link to that in the, uh, in the chat box um, you know, uh, momentarily. Um, but I, I do wanna kind of uh, also uh, get to Joseph's question um, about kind of you know, the professor mentorship that goes into all of this, you know, not just kind of in finding these programs. And Matthew, you talked a little bit about you know, working with Professor Ellis, but but really through a research lens. I mean, I mean, research kind of in its most fundamental form, you know, being asking questions and then answering them. I mean, how have how have you really benefited from the relationship with your professors in, in finding these programs, but in, but in also leading research, right, making them impactful and meaningful, um, either back at Oxy, you know, um, or abroad. Uh, Matthew, if you want to kick us off. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think uh, the the professor student relationship. I think is the fundamental aspect of academics in college. I think it gets glossed over a lot in terms of like, oh, professors are so hard. Like they know so much, they're intimidating, whatever. Uh, they are professors because they are passionate about their specific field and they have decided to dedicate their lives to hanging out with college students and sharing what they're passionate about. So if you want to go talk to them, just go talk to them. And because our classes are small and intimate, being with somebody who loves what they do for three to four hours a week in a class of nine to 14, you, you can't 
not be engaged and uh, form a relationship with them. And so I think for my three to four years, I've had beneficial relationships here and in Spain. Um, for my Fulbright, I use relationships from Oxy and from my abroad program to create my application. And without those relationships, I wouldn't have had an application, period, point blank. I, I needed three recommendations um, from individuals in the States, and then I needed uh, a language rec. My language rec came from my favorite professor abroad, and my three recs came from professors here. And those would not have been possible without the beneficial relationships that you were able to form. Um, I haven't yet been able to do research on my own through Occidental, um, but I've been able to do research over the summer through American University um, that was also through a professor. And so I think I, no matter where you are, I'm going to champion Occidental because both that's what I know and our professors are great. Um, but it's just an unbelievable opportunity. I don't think you can really miss. Yeah. Um, and while we've got you on the mic, Matthew, um, final advice for seniors um, as they go through their search process. And, and um, I know you're almost there, you know, in, in that last kind of answer, but, um, but what are, what are your final thoughts? Yeah. Um, it's tough. And cause there's so, there's so much that one could say uh, I would probably end it with the same thing. Actually, I'll, I'll plug myself here uh, on the senior fellow website mm -hmm. on my own page. If you want to get in touch with me, um, what I mentioned there, uh, your college search and college in general, um, you're going to get out what you put in. And I think that goes for study abroad. That goes for your classes on campus. That goes for your relationships with friends, professors, faculty, and staff, um, and just life in general. You're going to get out what you put in. And I think uh, no matter where you end up for school, you have the potential to be happy there um, if you're kind of applying yourself and uh, doing all the work the right way. Um, and so I think. Uh, if, you, if you're here in this call, you're probably going about it pretty well so far, uh, putting in the work before you're even here. Um, but yeah, I would say uh, deep breaths, don't stress too much. The college process is rough. I really went through it myself, um, but uh, it'll turn out all right. All right, Ashley, any, any final thoughts, pieces of advice to add for, for seniors in the room? Um, yeah. Um, so the main thing being, you know, when you're looking into everything, make sure that it checks off your list for every category. So for your social fit, you know, if you're going to be happy there socially, academically, if you've got the opportunities, internship classes, all that stuff. And then, you know, economically, financially as well, like if you can afford it, if you know, you don't want to be in crippling debt for the rest of your life, just make sure it checks off all those boxes. And then also something that I've really been noticing a lot um, through working in the admissions office is that questions from students are great and you should be asking a million questions especially like i had said before um for me the main thing was also the feel of the campus that's that's a really big part of why i came to oxy and right now with covid you necessarily you can't really go you know and, and sort of be like oh what would my life be like here so i would say if you're doing interviews um ask a million questions like take the time ask all the questions or even email the schools that you're applying to and say, hey, can I like, connect with the student or can you answer like these 12 questions because it will benefit you in the long run. You're committing to a really big thing. So you might as well be really blunt for it. Absolutely. Um, and just as a shameless plug, if you, if you go to our admissions website, um, oxyoxy.edu slash admission dash aid, um, you'll be able to see where to register for an interview. You're absolutely right, Ashley. You should be trying to get in touch with as many folks as you can, and interviewing is a great way to talk to um, either senior fellows like these three wonderful folks um, or myself or Oxy alums in the community. Um, but we also have Oxy student chats every Wednesday where you can just have um, unfiltered and unfettered, you know, hour-long Zoom conversations with, with current students. Um, so lots of ways to gain those perspectives. Um, and, and in a year where you can't visit campus, that does make all the difference. Um, Kaya, would you be able to close us out with, with um, you know, kind of your two cents for, for those navigating the, the process? Yeah, 
I'll be quick. Um, one, I would say trust that you know what you like. I know that it probably feels like a really, you can be really indecisive when looking at colleges. And also that the stress does end and it will end, but just get through it for now. Get through it for now, one day at a time. Um, absolutely. Well, this has been lovely. Um, I've really enjoyed this conversation so much. Um, I appreciate all of our panelists taking the time out um, from their own senior senior task list to, to join us. Um, and to, to our students watching at home, um, I'm glad you were able to be here. I also want to remind you that this is only one, one week, um, one, one uh, webinar in a series of uh, weekly webinars intended to really help lift up kind of Oxy perspective. So while we really looked at, at off-campus programs and experiential learning today, we have recordings from some of our other webinars featuring engagement in Los Angeles, as well as club activities and student life. Um, and we have a few coming up in the next few weeks, including looking at the student athlete experience, as well as admissions and financial aid and uh, residential living, living at Oxy on campus. So lots of ways to learn a lot about Oxy. Um, join us for one of them, any of them. Know that all the recordings will be posted on our website at oxy.edu under the admission financial aid uh, explore campus page. Um, it's been great. Um, enjoy your Thursday nights. Enjoy your weekend. Um, try and catch the end of the presidential debates if you can. Um, and if you are over 18, don't forget to vote. Um, you still have two weeks to make it happen. Um, thank you all and have a good night.